It's time for Fairfield Mules Basketball. Fairfield Mules Basketball on Areasports.net is brought to you by FNB, Fairfield National Bank, Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods, Carter Turf and Tractor, Fairfield Printing and Graphics, Jaggers Doggy Daycare, Frontier Community College, Olson and Reeves Attorneys at Law, The Man Cave, and by Fairfield Produce. And now let's take you live to the gym for all the exciting play-by-play action of Fairfield Mules Basketball. And good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Mule Barn. It's a Saturday afternoon matinee matchup extraordinaire as the Fairfield Mules are getting set to take on the Effingham Flaming Hearts. I'm Randy Olson, courtside, joined by Mr. Analysis Marty Slover. And, Marty, good to have you along. And this should be a great matchup today against two teams that normally would never face each other. Going to be a good matchup. Two teams, like you said, that don't normally see each other. Uh, you know, uh, Effingham, a 3A school. Uh, Fairfield, a 2A school. And they don't normally see each other. So it's going to be a test for uh, – actually, it's going to be a test for both teams, I think. I think we've got some contrasting styles of play here a little bit. And I think we're going to uh, see a really good ball game today. Effingham Hearts come into the contest with a record of 10-10, and 10, but don't let that mislead you, fans, because uh, they are a very good basketball team. As Marty said, they're a 3A basketball team. They're a member of the Apollo Conference. Let's be honest, they place tougher competition than the Fairfield Mules do, and we had Coach Scott McElroy on the sports couch with us this morning, and Scott said, you know, if the Hearts were to play the same schedule we had, they probably also would be 22-2, and two, just like the Mules. Yeah, exactly right. You know, they play a lot uh, bigger schools, a lot tougher competition, uh, and then this is going to be a matchup uh, test for, I think, for Fairfield. It's good for them to, to, to play a school like this. It normally wasn't on the schedule. Mm-hmm. It just kind of worked out, and uh, that's good for them. We'll tell you briefly how it happened, and uh, kudos to both athletic dressers and coaches for getting this together. Saturday night, last uh, Saturday night after the snowstorm and coming home from the Salem Invitational Tournament, I was sitting at home. You had a brainstorm. And I had you? a brainstorm because yeah. I knew that Fairfield had gotten snowed out at, at their tournament game at Carmi, and I knew that Effingham and Centralia and Triad had gotten snowed out in their tournament at Salem. So I reached out to Coach McElravey last Saturday. I said, hey, you know what? You guys got lost a game from the snow, and there's three teams from the Salem tournament that are 3A schools that got their game canceled by the snow, not going to be made up. Maybe you can get together with one of those three teams and play some good competition down the stretch and throw one together because with the IHSA rules, you know, you can play up to 31 games. Plus, they were down a game. Yes, down so, lost a game at, at Carmine. Plus, it allows you to add a JV game like they did today. So Good, good uh, for those kids, too. They, they played a really, yeah. really solid. I saw this a little bit in the fourth quarter, but they, they played really solid the, 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 the fourth quarter that I did mm-hmm. see and uh, it got them a win. So all we did really was make the suggestion. Uh, Coach McElroy liked it. He uh, got with Bobby Wells, the athletic director at Fairfield, uh, and I think that uh, – that Mr. Wells, first of all, reached out to Centralia, uh, didn't get an immediate response from Centralia about playing, so he reached out to Effingham, and Effingham said, yeah, sure, we'd love the idea. We would love to play you. I think it would be good for both teams, and I'll tell you what, we'll even come down here and play at the Mule Barn, which surprised everybody because Fairfield was prepared to go to Effingham if they needed to. Yeah, you can't beat that. And you got a good crowd today, too, for a Saturday afternoon For a game, game that wasn't on the schedule, for, for crying out loud, it's a great, a great turnout today of fans. And so happy to see that, too. So I'm just... Uh, thrilled that that uh, both the athletic directors and coaches worked it out real quickly and uh you know they didn't talk to each other till tuesday they had it all together by uh by wednesday the, the main hurdle was finding officials yeah the game time i think probably helped them a lot there because what officials that were probably booked were probably booked late for the varsity game played mm-hmm. so right. it made a little, took a little pressure off them to, to maybe find somebody and uh that, that's good and so here we are, the Fairfield Mules at 22-2, and two, the Effingham Hearts at 10-10. and 10. Let's tell you a little bit about the Hearts, okay? They have some quality wins this year, Marty. They have beaten Chicago Corliss. Chicago Corliss has been ranked second in the state much of the year in Class 2A. Effingham beat them by 4 points, 63-59. They also have quality wins against Oaklawn. They beat Muhammad Seymour. Uh, they did lose to Olney, same thing that mm-hmm. Fairfield did, but mm-hmm. they only lost to Olney by 12, whereas Fairfield lost to Olney by 20, mm-hmm. okay? They played Nashville here just two weeks ago, lost to the Hornets by 9 points, 57-48. But get this, the 48 points that Effingham scored against Nashville is the second most points that Nashville's given up all season long. Typical so, Nashville ball club. Good, right. solid man-to-man defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, just, just the typical of how they play the game. So the fact that 
that Effingham has played so well against quality teams and then beaten some quality teams like we mentioned. You know they can score some points. You know they can play with just about anybody, and so this is going to be a real test for the Mules today. It's going to be a test. I think the size factor is going to come into play. I think the uh, the 6'5 uh, guard that Effingham has is going to be a matchup problem for us. I, I, I expect... Uh, them to, to have some difficulty trying to guard him because he's a scoring machine. You are talking about Landon Wolf. You're right. And he's the second leading scorer in the state of Illinois. He averages 27 points a game. You'll see a lot of him today. He'll be wearing number 15 for the Effingham Flaming Hearts. And he is a 6'5 senior. Again, he averages 27 points per game. His lowest game of the year, Marty, was 21. That was his low game of the year, 21. And he scored as much as 35. Last night in their win against Mount Zion, I believe he had 27 points uh, right around his average last night. So he's a scoring machine, like he's a, you say. He's a scoring machine. I, I, it's going to be interesting to see the approach that Coach Mack takes with uh, guarding him. Do you try to contain him and just take your chances, or do you let him get his points and shut everybody else down? It's mm-hmm. going to be really interesting to see how they, how they approach this here and, and who – I'm, I'm looking at who's going to guard him from, uh, from Fairfield. Right, right. Looking at the team averages, Fairfield averages 67 points per game on offense. They only give up 47 points per game on defense. Effingham, on the other hand, averages 57 points per game on offense. They also give up 57 points per game on defense. So they're 57-57, which is kind of what you'd figure with a team that's 10-10. Yeah, 500 right. ball club. So right, right where you're at, yeah. Hey, we're going to take a brief break, let you meet some of our sponsors. Be back with more on the pregame show here from the Mule Barn. It's Fairfield and Effingham live on areasports.net. As a craftsman, Gordy had imagination and vision. As a business owner and machinist, he understood all the moving components and how important they were to making things work. When he dreamed of building his business, he knew he needed help. FNB provided the spark necessary to ignite his growth. That partnership has proven to be his best creation yet. It's the heating season, and Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods remind you that they have fast, reliable propane delivery service for your home or farm. And if you need those propane bottles filled up, you can bring them to Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods for fast service. Looking for a wide selection of guns and ammunition? You'll find it at Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods. You can even search online through our website at waynewhitepropane.com. And don't forget, we also have hot tubs and supplies for your hot tub as well at Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods, located on West Main Street in... Are you going out of town for a vacation or a weekend getaway? What are you going to do with your dog? That's easy. There's Jagger's Doggy Daycare in Mount Vernon. Jagger's Doggy Daycare is your one-stop shop for overnight dog boarding, doggy daycare as well as dog grooming and obedience dog training it's your dog's home away from home they will thrive and they'll get one-on-one attention by a great staff more information is available on the web at jaggersdoggydaycare.com jaggers doggy daycare 414 main street in mount vernon Wherever life may take you, it all starts with the first step. Begin your journey with Frontier Community College, the foundation for your future. See a commercial there from Frontier Community College, and of course, Marty Slover is my co-host here today courtside for this basketball game and you are the softball coach at frontier and you were doing a little duty today a little uh, recruiting visit today Had a I visit guess, huh? today a young lady from uh, teotopolis came down for a visit and we uh, fortunate enough to have her come down here we made an offer to her so we'll see where that takes us awesome awesome that's uh, a big part of what you do of course is the recruiting process and that's something that's really year-round isn't it it's year-round it doesn't stop you know i mean uh, we you, t- you take a little time off around the holidays but uh, you know as soon as we get done playing we'll start uh, Watching high school games and recruiting and then the summer uh, showcases and and this never stops. Yeah. We were talking about the Effingham Hearts and the fact that Landon Wolf is going to be the guy that the Mules are going to have to try to stop or at least slow down and contain today. Averages 27 points per game, which makes him the second leading scorer in the state. 
And, again, his low game this year has been 21. But uh, he's not all they've got. Uh, he's 6'5", but they've also are going to start a guy 6'4 and 6'8". they got Cole Marksman at 6'8 in the pivot. He averages just about eight points per game and five rebounds per game. Then they got Nate Thompson at 6'4", who averages five points per game. And then uh, Landon Wolf's younger brother, Parker Wolf, the sophomore, he averages 11.5 points per game. So they've got a lot of weapons here. Lots of weapons. You know, that's going to be an interesting matchup. Uh, you know, Fairfield's uh, probably got some different things they're going to try on defense tonight to, to, to see if they can uh, slow down some of this uh, offense that Effingham has. Effingham Hearts are uh, coached by Obi Farmer. Interesting story with Obi. He uh, took over the reins of the Hearts here midseason. He was an assistant coach up there and has taken over the program here at midseason, which uh, you know can be pretty disruptive to some 16-, 17-year-old kids, but it seems like the Hearts, all their players are just kind of taking it uh, in stride, and they are playing some really, really good basketball now. It says a lot about your kids whenever they're able to handle adversity like that and not miss uh, miss a beat in transition of the season. And when you change coaches, that's a, that's a traumatic experience for a lot of kids, a different coaching philosophy, different style perhaps. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, you got to tip your... Your, your your hat to to the to Obi who came in here and uh, who's probably not changed a lot of things. He's letting the kids do what they do well, and uh, sounds like things are going really well for them here lately because they're playing some pretty good basketball. Yeah, and that's a that's a tough conference up there. That Apollo Conference. Apollo I mean, you're conference talking about tough. Lincoln yes. and Mattoon and Charleston and Muhammad Seymour and Taylorville and and uh, you know and and Taylorville's been state ranked much of the year in 3A, and Effingham blew Taylorville out of the gym. They beat them 84-60, to 60, and Taylorville's 18-2 and two on the year, and Effingham beat them by 24 points. You know, it's, it, 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 this could be a, a, a team that, you know, uh, is kind of a roller coaster maybe. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you never know what kind of a, a game you're going to get. I'm sure they're going to play hard, and they're going to play aggressively on, on defense, and they're going to shoot the ball really well. We know that, but it, it's going to be an interesting game to, to watch them match up. It certainly is. They are starting to lower the flag, and we're going to have the playing of our national anthem here in just a moment. And so while they're getting ready to do that, we'll take another brief break. Time out. Let you meet from some of our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Carter Turf and Tractor is now open in their beautiful new location on West Main Street in Fairfield in the former save building. Carter Turf and Tractor is your area dealer for high-quality Kubota tractors in a variety of sizes, perfect for a landscaping business or to easily handle a variety of jobs around your home or farm. They can customize the solution for your needs. They also have the Kubota RTV utility vehicles for on-road and off-road transportation and hauling needs. When there's mowing or lawn work to be done, Carter Turf and Tractor has you covered with Xmark riding mowers and walk-behind mowers. They also feature a good selection of Echo brand brush cutters, trimmers, and chainsaws, as well as Honda and Generac generators. Come in and see for yourself at the new Carter Turf and Tractor, open 8 to 5 Monday through Friday and 8 to 2 on Saturday. Underwriting on the Vines made possible by Fairfield Printing, Graphics, and Sporting Goods. You can support your favorite team with T-shirts and other team gear, including Sisney, Wayne City, Fairfield, Jasper, New Hope, and others. The new location features a larger showroom with more products and services being added. Fairfield Printing, Graphics, and Sporting Goods also does banners in a variety of sizes, as well as business printing needs like letterhead, envelopes, and business cards. Their website is fairfieldprintingandgraphics.com, and we appreciate their underwriting support. Our national anthem here this afternoon at the Mule Barn. Glad that you're with us here live on areasports.net as all the players greet each other at midcourt. The Effingham Hearts, their school colors are red and green, so we have made them uh, green on our Fairfield National Bank scoreboard this afternoon. The Mules are red, even though they'll be wearing their home white uniforms today. Let's meet the Effingham Hearts right now. Number 14 is Parker Wolf. He's 5'9", sophomore. Again, he averages about 11.5 points per game. Landon Wolf's the guy you got to really watch, number 15. He is second leading scorer in the state, averaging 27 points per game. Number 21 is Drew Thompson. He's a 5'11", sophomore. Averages about four points per game. Number 30 is Nate Thompson. Uh, they are cousins. Nate is a 6'4", sophomore. And number 52 is a big guy in the middle, Cole Marksman. He's a 6'8 senior, and he averages about uh, 7.5 points per game. And, again, they are coached by OB Farmer. So, again, they will go with uh, the two Wolves, the two Thompsons. So we got two brothers, two cousins, and then uh, Mr. Maxman in the middle. So 
That's the lineup for the Hearts. Keeping it all in the family, aren't they? They are keeping it all in the family. And I don't know if you remember Effingham from a few years ago, but there was an older Wolf brother that played for them a few years ago that was outstanding as well. For your Fairfield Mules. Now for the Fairfield Mules. Again, we're in the home white unis tonight. Number one is Reese Lee, six foot senior for the Mules. Number four is Wyatt Gilbert, 5'10 junior. Number five is Jazel O'Neill, 5'11 senior. Number 10 is Kane Hicksonball. I call him the silent killer. He's a 6'3 junior. And, of course, the man in the middle, Dr. Dunk, Brian Estes, had two more dunks last night in the win against Johnson City. He's a 6'6 senior for the Mules. So, usual starting lineup for Fairfield with Lee, Gilbert, O'Neill, Hicksonball, and Estes. And then all those interchangeable parts that we've talked about all year long with that depth, Marty, is they've got Cody Cantrell, Landon Zerlini, Luke Dagg that will all get in the game here early on. And, and that depth uh, may prove a difference in this game because I have a feeling that Fairfield's probably got a little bit better depth than what Effingham has. Well, the depth and, this, and also the quickness, too. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm interested to see how uh, how well Effingham handles the guards from Fairfield with, uh, with their defense that they play. All right. Teams are out on the court. We are ready for Saturday afternoon matinee basketball here from the Mule Barn as it'll be big Cole Marksman jumping against Estes, and tip is controlled by the Mules. With it is O'Neal out front. Comes over to Gilbert. Now to Reese Lee. Back out to O'Neal again. Looks to penetrate Kent. Comes back to Lee. They'll reset. Effingham opening up in a man-to-man here, Marty. Here's Reese Lee down the lane, goes up in the scoop shot, and that one is swatted away by Marksman, and all six, eight of his frame got in front of that ball. Yes, that, they're going to penetrate, but they're going to have a, tr- a tall tree standing there. It's going to be a challenge, that's for sure. Here is the lob into Estes. He takes it, tries to go inside, and loses it out of bounds. He'll try it again. Again, Effingham a 3A team. Fairfield, of course, 2A. Hickson ball has it. Shoots it from the elbow and a little too strong. And stepping on the end line was Estes on the rebound. That would give it to Effingham. Fairfield, a little full court pressure. Let's see how the Hearts handle it. Parker Wolf across the timeline. Goes over to Marksman, now to Landon Wolf. Back to his brother Parker, back to Landon. Works on Reese Lee. Shot is, hits the bottom of the backboard. Fairfield gets it ahead in transition to Gilbert. Gilbert bounce passes it over to O'Neill. He'll drive. Leaves it for Estes, and he scores. That breaks the ice for Fairfield. It's 2-0, and quickly up the court. Here comes Effingham inside the lane. Shot is missed there by Thompson. That's... Nate Thompson thrown ahead by the Mules and quick in transition. Estes beats everybody down the floor. Going to be a key right there, quickness. Getting up and down that court. Scoring quickly. Mules up 4-0. Here's Parker Wolf down the lane. No good. Back up by Landon Wolf and block. Ball is chased Nice down. hustle. Nice hustle there. Reese Lee went after the loose ball. Goes out of bounds in front of the Effingham bench and it'll be Hart's ball. Yeah, Effingham was scheduled to play in the third place game. And nice Salem. deal. Good read by Reese Lee. Two on one break. Gives it to Gilbert. His shot is good. And oh, count the bucket and a foul. And a foul. Reese Lee with a great steal and a good look and a wonderful pass there to get the bucket for Gilbert. That's something that's been a hallmark of this Fairfield team all year, Marty, is the fact they're so unselfish. They're not a selfish ball club at all. They get it out and they go, if you're open, you better be ready because you're going to have the ball in your hands. <laughs> they don't care who scores. They really don't. They just they just want to win. And they've won 22 of 24 games this year. 
So it's been a good recipe. Marksman dunks it with authority. What a way to get the first bucket of the game for the Hearts. As on a big-time two-handed slam. 6-2. to two. Here's Reese Lee out front. Three-pointer is short. Ball goes out of bounds and is going to stay with the Mules. I don't think Fairfield rotated back on that press. They were trapping. They didn't, the weak side didn't rotate back. Pretty easy for Marksman to flush it when you're 6'8", and long arms like he's got. Mm -hmm. O'Neal tries to penetrate. Comes out to Gilbert. Back to O'Neal. Loses the handle, but uh, chases it down. Got his, own, got his own deflection. Yeah, Effingham didn't see the loose ball there for a moment. Comes out to Reese Lee. He'll take it to the glass. It's swatted away by Marksman. And then we're going to have a whistle and a foul. And that's going to be on Estes, I believe. It's kind of one of those excuse me fouls, you know. He kind of bumped into him and didn't really mean to. Yeah, half court. That's a long ways from the basket. Wolf in the front court for the Hearts. Gets it to Thompson. That's Drew Thompson. Back out to Nate, his cousin. He puts it up. No good. There's the rebound by Marksman, and it's up and in. That cuts the lead to two. It's six to four. Fairfield with a lead in the basketball, and Estes turnover. has it slapped away. Here come the Hearts. Parker Wolf all the way down. Has it swatted away by Estes. Oh. And the Fairfield fans don't like that one. Not so sure about that. And uh, Coach McElravey doesn't like it either. He's having a few words with the officials. There's two fouls on Brian. Yeah, that could prove very large for the Mules here at 442. We'll write that down. 442 here in the first quarter. And Estes with two personal fouls. As the free throw by Parker Wolf is good. Six to five. But the one thing the Mules have is depth, and coming off the bench is Luke Dagg. Something, something's going to happen. That's right. Something is going to happen. He makes something happen. You're right. Every time he comes in. We're all tied at 6-6 after the two free throws by Wolf. Let's see how the Mules play it now. As they come in to Gilbert, he'll spin in the lane, puts up the shot, banked it in. Wyatt Gilbert puts the Mules back in front, 8-6. Hart's back in the front court now. Parker Wolf over to Nate Thompson. Tries to go inside to Landon Wolf, and he gets his first bucket of the game. So Effingham's leading score goes almost uh, four minutes before he gets a bucket, but he's on the board, and we're all tied at 8 8. Really never had a good touch and look at the basket no. until then. No, he hadn't. You're right. Here's Landon Zerlini with it out front. He's going to take it up with the left hand, left it short, but he's he fouled. fouled. So for Landon, he'll have two free throws coming up. Let's see who they call that one on. It's on Nate Thompson, his first. And Landon Zerlini at the line. Missed the free throw. In the ball game for the Mules is Cody Cantrell. Another one for Zerlini is good. It is 9-8. Deals by one. Effingham in the front court. Thompson on the wing. Goes inside. It's knocked away by guess who? Luke Dagg. He made something happen there, Mark. He made something happen. He's that's not a gimme that you're going to get the ball in the low post with him in there. Here's a lob in to Landon Wolf. Again, he can shoot from virtually anywhere on the floor. Here's a shot from the top of the key. It's short, no good by Thompson. And goes out of bounds, going to belong to the Mules. 3.40 to play here, opening quarter. Fairfield up by one, 9-8. Zerlini. That's a steal. Back the other way. Layup is good by Parker Wolf. Turnover on the Mules results in a quick bucket for Effingham. And it's 10-9 now, Hearts. And there's another turnover on the Mules. Some careless mistakes here, you mm -hmm. know. Effingham really not putting a lot of pressure on. They're just playing good, solid defense. And Fairfield's kind of shot themselves in the foot a couple times. Kind of been uh, unforced errors, haven't they? Yes. 
Hart's in the front court again. Thompson has it. It's Nate Thompson. Again, we've got two Thompsons, two Wolfs out there for the Hearts. In the corner, here's Landon Wolf. It's off no good, and rebound by the Mules. Weak side with it. Coming away is O'Neal. He's going to get to the rim here. Oh, nice kick out. In the corner it goes. Shot is down by Cody Cantrell. Cantrell was spotted up nicely on that one, Marty. Yeah, he did. He saw the penetration from Giselle and... Puts the Mules up 11-10, but just like that, the Hearts answer right back, and it's 12-11. Landon Wolf, that's his second bucket of the game now. From the corner baseline, that's Dag, no good. Gets the rebound, puts it up and in. And the Fairfield. Mules go up by two. Fairfield might have got away with the push in the back right there. 2-12 left to play here, opening quarter. Landon Wolf has it out front. Here's a drive by Parker Wolf, and he is going to be fouled underneath the basket. Stops the clock with 2.05 left. Fairfield up by two. Parker Wolf, 5'9", sophomore, drains the first one. That's quite the athletic family. Again, uh, Landon and Parker here playing, and they had an older Wolf that played a few years ago that was an outstanding player. Chris <laughs> Lee back in the game for the Mules. Second free throw is good. And we're tied at 14-14. Fairfield with the ball in the front court. Hicksamaw has it. And we're going to have a foul called away from the basketball. Number 30. That's his second. Nate Thompson with a second foul for Effingham. And that's her third team foul. Fairfield takes it out of bounds and comes into uh, Cantrell. Ooh, almost, almost lost it. Almost. Almost lost it over, didn't he? Gets it now to O'Neal. O'Neal comes over to Hickson Ball. Hickson Ball leaves it for Reese Lee. Back to Hickson Ball. He's going to drive on him. Takes it up. Gets past Marksman and takes it up and in. Good move there by Hickson Ball. 16-14. Mules back up by two. Minute 25 to play in the quarter. Here's a drive down the lane. Shot is short by Landon Wolf. But he's fouled. And he'll go back to the line for a pair. Foul on Reese Lee, his first, and that's four team fouls now on the Mules. Free throw good by Landon Wolf. Five points on the game for Wolf now. 27 is his average. Also averages seven rebounds a game. Missed that one. Rebound by Cantrell. Here come the Mules. Get it ahead to O'Neal. Backdoor cut to Zerlini, and it's up and in. Nice pass there by O'Neal. Give him the assist. O'Neal score on the back door, which was left open. And just that quick, here come the Hearts, and they score right back with Parker Wolf. They don't waste any time getting down the court either, do they? They didn't. 18-17. Here's a drive baseline by Cantrell. The foul's going to be called on the Hearts. That's the first foul on the big guy, Marksman. Cole Marksman, the 6'8 senior, so it'll be out of bounds to the Mules with 57 seconds left here in the first quarter. Giselle kind of directing traffic out there, mm-hmm. getting people organized. They're trying to post up their Lini. He's got the ball right now. He tries to go up for the fadeaway, but he's fouled on the way up. <laughs> Coach Farmer not real fond of that call across the way. He thought he got ball. I'm not so sure he didn't get all ball. It, that was pretty good defense. Zerlini at the line. Got it. Neal's up by two, 1917. So far, this game's been all we thought it would be, nip and tuck between two quality teams. Missed the second one. Scramble for the rebound. Effingham's got it. Quickly in the front court, they come Drew Thompson. 
Gets it over in the corner to uh, Tate Nieberger, he, who's in there now. Now they swing it around the horn. Try to go down low to Parker Wolf. Back out to Marksman. Now around the perimeter again, down to 21 seconds left. Cody Cantrell guarding Wolf. Wolf has it. There's a double team. Top of the key, Marksman just inside the arc. He knocks it down. It's a two ball, and that ties the game. Just inside the arc, the big 6'8 guy showed the long distance stroke. Two seconds left. Mules with a shot from Cantrell. It lips in and out. No good. And that's how the first quarter ends. We're all tied. It's Fairfield 19 and Effingham 19. And we'll be back with more here in just a moment live on areasports.net. As a craftsman, Gordy had imagination and vision. As a business owner and machinist, he understood all the moving components and how important they were to making things work. When he dreamed of building his business, he knew he needed help. FNB provided the spark necessary to ignite his growth. That partnership has proven to be his best creation yet. Welcome back to the Mule Barn. All tied here after one quarter, 1919. Marty, your thoughts on that first quarter play? Well, first half of the first quarter, they kind of felt each other out a little bit. You know, the mm-hmm. kind of tentative. Then they kind of got settled into each other games and everything. Uh, some quick fouls on uh, on Brian S. He's kind of took Fairfield out of their momentum that they had for a while, but they regained that and started playing a pretty good, finished up the first quarter pretty good. All right, second half or second quarter underway as the Hearts have it. Tate Neberge gives it up out front now to Drew Thompson. Back to Nieberge. Thompson again. He'll fire away. Hits off the mark. No good. Ball's Fairfield, chased down. Fairfield with a box and one. Trying to limit the scoring of Landon Wolf if they can and make the other guys beat him, huh? Yeah, it looks like they're uh, really sagging off big time. Zerlini takes it inside. It's in and out. No good. There, there he is. is. He made it happen again. There he is. He came all the way across the lane on that rebound, Marty. Unbelievable athletic move. Came across the lane, got in the air, grabbed the ball, and went up strong and scored. Mules up by two, 21-19. Yeah, Dag. Uh, Who's wanting the ball right now? He's calling for the ball over there. Wide open for Cantrell. Cantrell the three. He's feeling it. Cantrell with his second. His second one from that left corner pocket. Mules go up by five, 24-19, and timeout is called by Effingham. And with timeout on the court, we will take timeout as well, and we'll be right back. Fairfield Produce is a big supporter of the mules and are happy to sponsor this broadcast. Visit Fairfield Produce for bird seed and feed for all kinds of farm animals. They proudly sell Macaulay's horse feed, which is the same feed from the same mill that is fed to the famous race horses like American Pharaoh and Justify. Cindy Grimes also invites you to stop in at Fairfield Produce for diamond brand dog food and cat food, as well as dog collars with personalized name tags. Fairfield Produce also carries styrofoam products you might need, as well as frozen food. Fairfield Produce is open Monday through Friday. 8 to 5 and 8 to noon on Saturday at 206 Southeast 2nd Street in Fairfield. Back to live action after the Effingham timeout. The Hearts have it down by 5 as they get it to Tate Nieberge. Now down the corner. The shot is off the mark. No good by Marksman. Rebound by the Mules. Here comes Reese Lee out on the dribble. Out to Dag. Leaves it for Cantrell. Cantrell back to Zerlini. Over to Reese Lee. Effingham staying in their man-to-man defense here. Lee picks up his dribble, gives it to Gilbert. Over in the corner to Cantrell. Here, he'll be impatient. You notice they've uh, put Land and Wolf on Cantrell now. They're going to respect that outside shooting after he's hit two of them. There he is. Here's Cantrell again. And, well, he got it up before Wolf could get out there. Another three ball. Fairfield's in a triangle in two. 27-19. In the triangle two defense. They are. Yep. Sure enough, they have got uh, Reese Lee and Zerlini and Dag playing the triangle. And they got Cantrell man-to-man on Wolf. And they've got um, Gilbert on the other Wolf. So they're playing both the Wolves straight up man-to-man and doing the triangle. In the lane. That's 
a foul on Cantrell. And going to the line will be Landon Wolf. Twenty-seven to twenty now. So free throw by Wolf. Again, if you just joined us, Mules got to a little early foul trouble as two early fouls by Brian Esty sent him to the bench, but. Cody Cantrell has come off the bench along with Zan- Landon Zerlini and Luke Dagg, and they have done a great job, and Cantrell has, uh, what, nine points here. Nine points, three, three balls. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be a foul inside. That's on Thompson, his first. Going to be out of bounds on the baseline to the Mules. That's 16 fouls now on Effingham. There's five have been called on the Mules here in the first half. Zerlini's open for three. He got it. Landon Zerlini tickles the twine from behind the line. The Mules are raining threes here in the first half. Raining inside. Ten-point lead, their biggest of the game. It's 30-20. to 20. 518 left here, first half. There's a drive cutoff down there as Drew Thompson couldn't get to the rim. So they'll come back out around the perimeter again. Thompson working against O'Neal. Goes up. That's blocked by Zerlini and out of bounds. How about that defense, Marty? Pretty good defense. I tell you what, Fairfield's doing a really good job in denying the the pass on the perimeter, and when the per- penetration comes, they're quick enough to stop that penetration. Landon Wolf will trigger it in for the Hearts. He comes into his brother Parker. Parker goes in the lane, goes up for the shot, missed it. Landon gets the rebound, put it back up and in. Thirty to twenty-three now. Seven-point game. Mules have it. Almost a steal. That's a pretty athletic move right there, too. Gilbert has it swatted away from Marksman. That was a turnover. White just reached up and grabbed it and mm-hmm. pulled it out of his hands. Sure did. Yeah, if you wait for that ball to come to you, that's it's intercepted. It's going the other way, and it's a layup. So, you're right. He went and met that pass in midair. Here's O'Neal coming in to Zerlini. Back to O'Neal. To Gilbert. Gilbert over to Hickson ball, and he can't get around his man. Tries to throw it cross court, and it's knocked out of bounds. Pass was intended for Dag. It'll stay with the Mules. Out of bounds with 4.25 left here in the first half. They come into Dag. Back to O'Neal. To Hickson ball. He wanted to. Hmm. Started to pull the trigger. Now here's Dag goes up for the shot, little too strong. It lipped out. Ooh, there's a push off by push Marksman. Off, nobody called it. Marksman clearly well, well, pushed I think off Luke, Dag. I think Luke got a shot back in there. Yeah, he did. Dag and Marksman are definitely getting physical in there. There's the fans foul, are loving foul it. Right there. Here's a two-on-one break ahead to Dag. He's going to lay it up, miss the shot. He's going to foul too, and he's going to reach in and foul Landon Wolf. Well, we said that when Luke comes in, things happen. Things happen. When Luke comes in the ballgame, you know something's going to happen. Most of the time, it's good things, Most too. of the time, it is. That's right. And yeah, that gets this crowd fired up, and I think it's got the, fan, the uh, players fired up, too. Timeout on the court. And with timeout on the court, we will take timeout as well and be right back here in just a moment. Stay with us. Wherever life may take you, it all starts with the first step. Begin your journey with Frontier Community College, the foundation for your future. Back at the Mule Bar and Randy Olson courtside here with Marty Slover. It's an afternoon matinee game here between the Fairfield Mules and the Effingham Flaming Hearts. Effingham down by seven. They've got the basketball. Inside, shot is up. It's no good. Tip back up by Marksman. No good. Rebound, Luke Dagg for the Mules. Gets the clear out to Reese Lee. He'll circle it back out, and they'll set up the offense. To O'Neal, down the lane. Nice pass. Gives it to Hickson Ball, and it's swatted away by Marksman. Another block. 
Almost a traveling violation. But the Hearts get it across the line, and it's blocked on the other end by the Mules. They're letting them play. Luke Dagg is given some quality minutes. Here's Hickson ball for three. No good. The rebound, Parker Wolf or Landon Wolf this time. I think he might have hurt his hand a little bit on that last block. And on the ensuing play in the front court, the traveling violation on the Hearts. Turnover will give it back to Fairfield. Seven-point Mules lead here with 2.58 to go in the first half. Mules have led by as many as 10. Here's Gilbert. Backdoor nice back cut. cut. Oh, yeah. Couldn't go up against Marksman, though. And a foul. Kind of tough down there when you're 5'9 and you're staring a 6'8 guy in the face. That's a little difficult. Mm, it is a little difficult. It's one thing to give up two the inches, another thing to give up smaller. 12. The basket gets a lot smaller. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Foul on the mules. And going to the line will be Parker Wolf. That foul was on Jay Zell O'Neill, his first. Free throw is missed. Rebound by Fairfield. Down the lane, and a foul is going to be called as Wyatt Gilbert forced the issue that time. And he drew the foul against Drew Thompson. And on Thompson, that is his second personal foul. Mules are in the bonus. Actually, both teams are in the bonus the rest of the way now. Here in the first half as Gilbert's free throw is good. 31-23, Mules by eight. And a big round of applause by the uh, Mule faithful here as they uh, give Luke Dagg a big round of applause as he heads to the bench along with Jay Zell O'Neill. Here's the second free throw good by Wyatt Gilbert. And that Reece. ball's knocked out of bounds. I think they called oh, a foul. They did call Lee. foul. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, Reese going to pick up his second foul. He was trying to get the steal there. Effingham doesn't waste any time getting the ball up the court after a made basket. Whether it's a free throw or a made basket by the Mules, Effingham gets it out of bounds and goes. They like to get it out and go. And I think Fairfield's putting a little bit of pressure on up front just to try to slow him down a little bit. But uh, it's not slowing him down enough. At the line is Parker Wolf, and his free throw is good. Cuts the lead back to eight, 32-24. We were all tied after one quarter, 19-19. So the Mules have pulled out to a good advantage here in the second quarter as that free throw is good by the Hearts, 32-25. It's a seven-point Fairfield lead. Here's O'Neal down the lane, and he scores. He just blew by the defender that time. Fairfield this, did a lot of this scoring, too, with Brian Estes sitting on the bench with two fouls. Mm-hmm. He has missed much of the game, has not played at all in the second quarter, and left the game with, uh, what was it, uh, 442 left in the first quarter. Here's Marksman with a down on the block for Effingham. Comes back out to Thompson. Now baseline back to Marksman. Missed the bunny. No good. Goes back up. Got it. He's a big guy in there. Picked up a lot of space. 34-27. Marksman with eight points now for Effingham here in the first half. Wide open three. Oh, closed out on him really well. Cantrell. Skip passes it over here to O'Neal. Now to Zerlini. Zerlini turns, fires. Get oh, couldn't get the roll. Didn't get it. Landon Wolf with a rebound for Effingham. Here come the Hearts. Long shot by Wolf. No good. There's Hicksonball with great inside rebounding position. Gets it ahead to O'Neill, and the Mules will set up their offense with a minute 18 to go. Cantrell with it. Works inside. Nice move, Cody. I don't think he might have got fouled there. Ball was deflected, and Effingham comes away with it. Parker Wolf now. Leaves it in the corner for Thompson, and it rattles in and out. No good. A battle for the rebound. Over to Marksman, and he slams it home. No doubt about that one by Marksman. Cuts the lead to five. It's 34-29. We're down to 45 seconds left here. High percentage shot. That is a very high percentage shot. You got it. Here's O'Neal taking it inside. That's deflected. Rebound by the Hearts. They're going to throw it ahead. They got transition and a layup. Missed it. Rebound Thompson. He's pushed to the floor. Going to be a foul on the Mules. Drew Thompson got the rebound there. After the missed layup. First foul on Hicksonball. Ball. 
Cody Cantrell has uh, been the uh, scoring leader for the Mules here in the first half as the rebound is put in by Wolf. And all of a sudden, it's back to a three-point game. Mules led by 10 earlier this quarter. It's 34-31. We're down to 15 seconds left in the half as Mules will run it down for one. Here's a drive, and it's up and in by O'Neill. And White Gilbert came down on his ankle. Ooh, yep, he is in the corner. And yeah, he's hurting. He's not feeling too good. Yep, they're going to take him straight to the locker room right now and take a look at that. So Estes has been on the bench with two fouls, and now Wyatt will go to the locker room. We've got six seconds left here in the first half. He was trying to get into Markson and get draw some contact to get a foul, and he came right down on the side of his of his foot. Six seconds left in the half. Time for Effingham to get a quality shot off if they can. Here's Thompson in the front court. Goes to Marksman. Back to Wolf. Wolf will fire one over O'Neill. It won't go. And the horn sounds, and that's the end of the first half of play. And our first half score is Fairfield 36 and Effingham 31. We'll come back and take a look at the first half stats here. In just a moment, talk more about this basketball game live from the Mule Barn on areasports.net. Underwriting on the Vines made possible by Fairfield Printing, Graphics, and Sporting Goods. You can support your favorite team with T-shirts and other team gear, including Sisney, Wayne City, Fairfield, Jasper, New Hope, and others. The new location features a larger showroom with more products and services being added. Fairfield Printing, Graphics, and Sporting Goods also does banners in a variety of sizes, as well as business printing needs like letterhead, envelopes, and business cards. Their website is fairfieldprintingandgraphics.com, and we appreciate their underwriting support. Sometimes you need an attorney who can look out for your interest. Located just a short drive away in Mount Vernon, Olson and Reeves offer a free consultation to discuss your needs. Everything is discreet and confidential. At Olson and Reeves, they can provide you with consultation and assistance with traffic law and DUIs, estate planning, living wills, divorce, real estate contracts, personal injury and accidents, as well as medical malpractice. Call Olson and Reeves Attorneys at Law in Mount Vernon at 316-7322. Today's broadcast is made possible through the generosity of the Man Cave in downtown Fairfield. Have you been to the Man Cave with Gene Kolak? Lots of stuff for men, including knives, guns, photographs, coins, lots of collectibles, oddities, and conversation pieces. You can spend hours in the Man Cave downtown Fairfield. Gene Kolak invites you to visit the Man Cave, a unique store with so much more. We appreciate his support. It's the heating season, and Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods remind you that they have fast, reliable propane delivery service to your home or farm. And if you need those propane bottles filled up, you can bring them to Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods for fast service. Looking for a wide selection of guns and ammunition? You'll find it at Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods. You can even search online through our website at waynewhitepropane.com. And don't forget, we also have hot tubs and supplies for your hot tub as well at Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods. Located on West Main Street in. Welcome back to the Mule Barn. It's halftime, and the Fairfield Mules lead the Effingham Flaming Hearts here at halftime by a score of 36 to 31. I'm Randy Olson, courtside, joined by Mr. Analysis Marty Slover. Quite a first half there, Marty, as the game was tied 19 19 after one quarter. Mules got up by as many as 10. Uh, Effingham brought it back to within three and 
Now it's five points here at halftime. Yeah, Fairfield got some really good looks, uh, you know, at the basket and could get some shots to go down. I think uh, Effingham may be just a little bit confused on how to attack that triangle and two down there. Uh, they're uh, they're up on. Uh, they're trying to run Markson down low on the baseline is to try to penetrate and get him the ball, and it's worked a couple times. Mm-hmm. But uh, and they're do- Fairfield's doing a really good job of keeping the ball out of Parker Wolf's hands. I mean, he, he's got 11 points, but they've they've done a good job. Uh, Two field goals. The rest have been on fouls. I mean, he's not been taken over the game. No, he's not know. taken over the game. Uh, he's, he's, he's got two field goals, and the rest of it has come from the free throw line, so they've done a really good job on him. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and run through all the uh, scoring and stats for us here in the first half, Marty, if you okay, would. Okay, uh, for Fairfield, uh, they, White uh, Gilbert, who left the game uh, with six seconds to go in the, in the in the first half, had twisted his ankle, has six points. Uh, Jay Zell O'Neill with four. Kane Hicks ball with two. Brian Estes was limited playing time, but when he was in there, he, uh, he came out with 4.42 to go, I think, in the first quarter, mm-hmm. four points. Cody Cantrell with some quality uh, oh, minutes, yeah. three three big uh, uh, three-point shots for nine. Landon Zerlini, Zerlini off the bench also uh, with seven, and Luke Dagg, uh, four points, but the defense that he contributed out there was tremendous. Mm-hmm. Uh, for Effingham, uh, they were led in the first half in scoring with uh, Landon Wolf with 11, Parker Wolf with 10. Uh, and Cole Markson with 10 and two of them pretty high percentage shots, by the way. And that's with all the scoring for uh, Effingham. They're led with uh, those three young men right there for a total of 31 points. And Fairfield uh, uh, had, had quarters of 19 and 17 for 36 points. Mm-hmm. Again, it was tied 19-19 after the first quarter. It's 36-31 here at halftime. The Eagles lead it by five. Both these teams played last night, Marty, so it's not like either team had an advantage being arrested or anything because Effingham beat Mount Zion last night. 71-52, and the Mules beat Johnson City 83-42. to So uh, no, no team had a chance to really t- to prepare either. Right, you know, probably right. Probably watched a little bit of video on each other, you know, yeah. perhaps this morning or something, but uh, not a chance to really get out and walk through things. Well, and, and neither team knew that the game was going to be played till Wednesday. Yeah, you know, so you don't so, have much time. Right, so it wasn't much time at all, particularly since you got that game Friday that you're really preparing for. So mm-hmm. they've watched a little bit of game film, like you say, but not mm-hmm. a whole lot of mm-hmm. uh, preparation probably uh, beyond that. So... Uh, but uh, we expect uh, quite a battle here in the second half. It'll, it'll be interesting to see if the Effingham Hearts make any adjustments to try to get some more looks here for Landon Wolf in the second half. They're giving a big round of applause to Jaden Lewis, who just came back today from San Diego, where he has been in the Marine Corps doing basic training. And he literally just got back at 10 o'clock this morning. I spoke to him out in the lobby a little bit ago. And, you know, he went through that, uh, that brutal, brutal... Huh. Uh, basic training that the Marines put you through, and so many don't survive that. They don't uh, make it, you know. So, somehow somehow I thought he was going to, though. He's uh, a very tough cookie. And he is, uh, he, if you talk to him and look at him, uh, he's a little bit more slim and trim than, than what he was when he went out there because, you know, they'll take a lot of the weight off of you because they work you so hard. Yeah. You do so much running and, and everything. And uh, but, uh, but, man, he is... Uh, uh, looking good and feeling good, and uh, great to be what, what back did, in Fairfield for a little what, while. What did they say? A lean, mean fighting machine? Yeah, <laughs> that's what he is. Yeah, lean, mean fighting machine. That's right. But uh, uh, obviously, since he's been out there, this has been his first opportunity to see Fairfield Mules basketball this year, and a team that he played on last year. So I know he's glad to be back, and he's just here for a short time, and then uh, I'll be shipping back out again. And, uh, they don't know for sure, you know, really where he'll end up at. Uh, and hats off to some of these kids too. But Fairfield's got a young man over here, uh, mm-hmm. Logan Trent, who's, who's doing the same thing uh-huh. uh, for Fairfield. So, uh, you know, that says a lot about our kids uh, yeah. that are willing to do things like that. That's, I that's agree. a tremendous sacrifice. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, definitely. Anything else that you see here in the first half that uh, might be something for us to take a look at well, in I, the second half? I think uh, it, SD's coming back in the ballgame, mm-hmm. obviously, is going to change the complexion of things right. uh, for Fairfield. They get back into, into their. Uh, post player with him, and their kids are more comfortable, I think, uh, with him on, on, the, uh, on the floor. Uh, I'm not sure what uh, Fairfield will do if they'll stand that triangle in two. Uh, you wonder how I think is going to get a chance now to sit back and, mm-hmm. and draw up something and try to get some, some offense out of that. Um, it, basically, it's going to be about who, who can uh, stop penetration from Fairfield because they're, they are getting in the lane very easily, mm-hmm. but they're not able, unable to finish because of obviously Cole Marks in there, your six eight right. center. So that's going to be something if we start making some shots right there. I think uh, yeah, Effingham's going to have to hit some shots if Fairfield stays in that triangle of two from somebody other than the three kids that have scored because Marksman's right now it's five on three or about, at least about seven on three where that depth yeah. factor comes in. Right, Marksman's had four or five 
block shots in the first half, and he's changed the direction um, on several others, you know, so he's definitely been a factor he's out there. He's been a there. factor. Uh-huh. But uh, where would the Mules be without uh, Cantrell here in this without, first half? He Co- came off the bench and really made an impact. Well, you, you've got uh, two kids there. Uh, you, you have si- 16 points mm-hmm. from Cody Cantrell and Landon Zerlini coming off your bench. Right. And uh, that's, a, that's a testament to the depth that these kids have. And, and uh, the way that they come in, they don't miss a beat with, uh, offensively. Uh, they do need Brian's leadership out there, I think. Uh, he, he can can uh, provide that for them. But uh, these kids played extremely well with him sitting on the bench with two fouls early. Again, we said coming into the broadcast that this was a game that was going to help really both teams because both teams needed to have another game that had some good competition down the stretch before you get in the regional play. And quite honestly, there's not a whole lot left on the Fairfield schedule that's going to challenge them. But this is a challenge for them today. We knew it would be. Uh, it has been. It's going to continue to be, and it's just going to make Fairfield better. Well, and there's another challenge, too. We don't know the health of uh, White Gilbert, so that's going to be a challenge, too, because they uh, taking him off the floor it means that somebody else is going to step up and then take away uh, the minutes that you can be. Uh, your rotation is going to be a little bit different. Not, I don't know if he's taped up and back in there. I know he's probably wanting to be on the floor. Uh, I don't see. I think he is over there. I think if he, I do if see he him. is, he must be. Uh, no, he's not. I don't. He see must him. be sitting down because I don't yeah, see him don't standing see him. in the he's, huddle he's not there. So, so yeah, and, and he's such a great defensive player, and of Tremendous. course, a uh, good ball handler out there. That's kind of, you know, it's kind of a floor general out there, so to speak. So they are definitely going to miss him here in the yeah. second half. So, again, they played most of the first half without Estes. Looks like they're going to play the second half without Gilbert. Let's see what the Mules do as we're ready for second half action. Obviously the teams change ends and the Mules in their white uniforms will have the ball first as it comes in to Reese Lee. And uh, he'll work it across against Thompson. As Estes does start the game here in the second half. Nice floater. Inside O'Neal missed the shot. Rebound Wolf for the Flaming Hearts. He'll get it in the corner to Nate Thompson. He'll fire away. He's left wide open. And he drains it. 36-34. Nobody out on him. Defensively. They almost conceded that shot. Mm -hmm. Maybe something they saw on film didn't think that he ever took shots like that or could hit them, but he certainly proved he could there. Estes has it for the Mules. He'll put one up. It's in and out. No good. Marksman with the rebound for the Hearts. Here they come in transition. They like to get it up and down the court quickly as well, much like the Mules. A lot of similarities in these teams, other than the fact that Effingham has a 6'8 guy and the Mules don't. Marksman's got it from the elbow. He shoots it. It's good. We're tied. 36-36 here early in the second half. Jay Zell O'Neill takes it inside, has to change the direction of his shot because of Marksman, but he still scores. That was a pretty athletic move. That was acrobatic that time, but he made it happen. 38-36. Hart's back on the attack again. Drew Thompson gives it to Marksman, back to Thompson. He'll fire away, 16-footer, no good. There's inside rebounding position, Landon Wolf, and he easily sticks it back up and in. 13 points now for Wolf on the game. Again, he came in averaging 27. Second leading scorer in the state. Low game of the year has been 21. Here's Reese Lee with it. He's open from the top of the key. Missed it. Marksman there with the rebound again. All tied. Here comes the Hearts. 5.48 to play. Third quarter. Here's a shot from the left wing. It's off no good by Nate Thompson. The follow by Marksman is good. Marksman shows the ability to hit that shot from that elbow. He's hit two of them from that Fairfield spot needs a on the floor. They need a timeout. Yep. Yeah, that's a good one. 40 to 38 as uh, Coach is going to definitely talk things over with them right now. And while there's timeout on the court, we will take one as well and be right back. Carter Turf and Tractor is now open in their beautiful new location on West Main Street in Fairfield in the former Save-A-Lot building. Carter Turf and Tractor is your area dealer for high-quality Kubota tractors in a variety of sizes. Perfect for a landscaping business or to easily handle a variety of jobs around your home or farm. They can customize a solution for your needs. They also have the Kubota RTV utility vehicles for on-road and off-road transportation and hauling needs. When there's mowing or lawn work to be done, Carter Turf and Tractor has you covered with X-Mark riding mowers and walk-behind mowers. 
They also feature a good selection of Echo brand brush cutters, trimmers, and chainsaws, as well as Honda and Generac generators. Come in and see for yourself at the new Carter Turf and Tractor, open 8 to 5 Monday through Friday and 8 to 2 on Saturday. Welcome back to Fairfield as the Mules have the basketball coming out of the timeout, down by 2, 40 to 38. O'Neill comes over to Reese Lee. Two Estes now. Goes inside to Hicksonball. His shot's deflected by Maxman. Or Marksman, I should say. And the Hearts come away with it. Ahead to Landon Wolf. Takes it inside. Puts up the shot. And no good. Rebound by Hicksonball. He'll bring it up for the Mules. White Gilbert's made his way back out here with an ice bag on his ankle. So he looks like he's done for the, the day. O'Neill takes it inside, has it stripped by Landon Wolf. Throws it ahead to his brother, Parker. He puts it up and in with a left hand. Biggest lead of the game now for Effingham. They're up by four, 42-38. Mules were up by five at halftime, so this has been a nine-point swing in favor of the Hearts. 4.35 to go here, third quarter. Hickson ball has it out to O'Neill. Leaves it for Lee. Lee inside the lane to Hickson Ball. He pump fakes. Now comes back out to Estes. He'll put it up. He got it. Ryan Estes Estes cuts the lead back to two, 42 to 40. 414 left here in the third quarter. Effingham doing a really good job on those ball screens at this in the second half. Shot from the corner by Wolf is no good. A battle on the boards. Thompson's got it out front now. Gives it to Landon Wolf. He'll fire away no good. Rebound by Nate Thompson. He'll give it to Parker Wolf. His shot is short. No good. Rebound this time by Zerlini. And here come the Mules. Zerlini tries to go baseline. Now turns, circles, puts up the shot. No good. Marksman oh. with a rebound. And they're going to get... Uh, Estes. Estes with foul number three. Marksman had uh, inside rebounding position there, yep. though. Yep, he did. And Luke Dagg is going to come back into the game for Fairfield, so you know something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. Parker Wolf is going to bring it up for Effingham. Out to Landon Wolf now. To Marksman. Trying to post up Parker in, on Cantrell. And that's a foul going to be called. Is taking it inside to the basket was Drew Thompson, and he was fouled and I, gets up slowly there. That's on. Ooh, that is four, four on, Estes. on Estes. So Estes is going to be sitting out for a long time here. This is the only game that I'm aware of that Estes has been in that kind of foul trouble for the Mules this year. Usually doesn't get in, in, in foul trouble like that. I mean, he has not had very many minutes on the on the floor today. Did not play at all in the second quarter. Got his second foul at 4.42 to go in the first quarter. Free throw up and in. Got them both. Drew Thompson. 44-40. Effingham up by four. Here's Hickson ball on the baseline. Comes back out to O'Neill. Shot from Cantrell is no good. Battle for the rebound, and Marksman comes up with it. They're going to call a jump ball between Marksman and Hickson ball, and the possession arrow is going to give it to Effingham. 2.49 to go here, third quarter. Parker Wolf with it. Down low to his brother, and he scores. Landon Wolf. He was open baseline and took it up and in. That puts Effingham up by six, their biggest lead of the game. Again, Fairfield led by five at halftime and led by as many as ten in the second quarter. Officials having a little discussion there. Confusion somewhere. Yeah, they might be... uh, not sure who the foul was on. They're having a little discussion. I want to make sure the scores got it right. 
Well, it was definitely uh, Landon Wolf that got fouled, no doubt. They got the right guy at the. Uh, I guess they gave that to Luke Bag. Line. So, Wolf for a chance to complete the three point play, and he does. 47 40, Hearts by seven. Fairfield needs some they, offense they need here. Score. They need a bucket here. Hickson ball. Out to Dag. Yeah, the game's defense is a whole lot better this second half than it was in the first half. Cantrell drives baseline and traveled with the basketball. Might have been a little bit intimidated there by Marksman as he took it to the glass. Drug that pivot foot. That's what will happen when you got a 6'8 guy in there. Rim got a lot smaller. Mm-hmm, sure did. Hearts again in the front court. Fairfield's trying to pick it up on the defensive end here, trying to create something. Landon Wolf takes it to the glass and scores. And uh, he's starting to starting to heat up a little starting bit. Starting to assert himself a lot more into this game. Again, came in averaging 27 points a game, and he's got 18. And we're still in the third quarter. Hickson ball now for the Mules. Down by nine. They definitely need some offense. Here's O'Neal with it. Tries to take it inside, and a foul's going to be called. Minute 30 left here in the third quarter. O'Neal gets it into Cantrell. Back to O'Neal. Takes it up and scores. That even could have been goaltending because yeah. Marksman hit the rim. So even if it had rimmed out, I think it would have counted. I think it would have counted it. Mm-hmm. Here's the inbound to Drew Thompson. And that, uh, that stopped about a 8-0 run there by the Hearts. Fairfield's going to have to try to do a lot more penetration. They're not getting to the rim penetrating like they were earlier. You're right. They're getting a lot of layups in that first half, and it's not been there here in the second half. Here's Parker Wolf with it. He skidded on the floor and skidded out of bounds. Right over the baseline. 57 seconds left here in the third quarter. Mules down by seven. Need to chip back away at this Effingham lead. That comes almost, off the foot. I almost told it for one right here. We have to call a timeout. Got to get it across the timeline. Barely did there. O'Neal has it. I'd hold it for one since we're in a little bit of foul trouble. Mm-hmm. Might not be a bad idea unless you get a layup here. Hickson Ball has it. Out to Cantrell. Cody in the corner to Reese Lee. Takes it inside over to Dag. Back to Hickson Ball. Little back layup. door. And there's the layup you wanted right there. Nice feed to Dag, and he laid it in off the window. Cuts the lead back to five, 49-44. Ten seconds left in the quarter. Here's Parker Wolf. No. In the down low to Marksman, and there's another royal flush by the big guy. 51-44, that's the end of the third quarter. Our score, Effingham now in front. They lead the Fairfield Mules by a score of 51-44, and we'll be back with fourth quarter action in just a moment. Underwriting on the Vines made possible by Fairfield Printing, Graphics, and Sporting Goods. You can support your favorite team with T-shirts and other team gear, including Sisney, Wayne City, Fairfield, Jasper, New Hope, and others. The new location features a larger showroom with more products and services being added. Fairfield Printing, Graphics, and Sporting Goods also does banners in a variety of sizes, as well as business printing needs like letterhead, envelopes, and business cards. Their website is fairfieldprintingandgraphics.com, and we appreciate their underwriting support. Sometimes you need an attorney who can look out for your interest. Located just a short drive away in Mount Vernon, Olson and Reeves offer a free consultation to discuss your needs. Everything is discreet and confidential. At Olson and Reeves, they can provide you with consultation and assistance with traffic law and DUIs, estate planning, living wills, divorce, real estate contracts, personal injury and accidents, as well as medical malpractice. Call Olson and Reeves Attorneys at Law in Mount Vernon at 316-7322. Welcome back to the Mule Barn. Randy Olson and Marty Slover here bringing you fourth quarter action now. Your thoughts on that third quarter play, Marty? Well, you know, Verfield didn't shoot the ball real well. Uh, didn't get many really good looks. It seemed like every time that they 
they tried to get something going. They, they turned the ball over. So it was just a, a kind of a, a, a quarter that didn't really they didn't get their, in their fit into their game plan, I don't think. I think they kind of got out of things a little bit. A little discombobulated there. Yeah, a just a little bit. bit. Yeah. That foul's on Parker Wolf, his second. Here's Hicksonball taking it baseline. He scores. Hicksonball cuts it to five. It's 51 46. Four, or 7.41 to go in the ball game. Hart's back in the front court as Marksman brings it out to Wolf. Now over to Thompson. That's Nate Thompson. Out to Drew Thompson now. Now to Marksman again. And it's punched away, picked up by Reese Lee. Thrown ahead to Cantrell, oh. but a little bit too far. I think, I think that he, yeah, I think him got a hand on that. All right, so it's going to be Fairfield ball then. Nice break. Cantrell was run the post pattern that time, and they were trying to hit him for the TD. Almost had him. Mm-hmm. Here's the inbound to Zerlini. Landon wanted to. Lennon thought about it from about 26. He's going to put it from about, oh. Top of the key, got it. And he got fouled. They didn't call the foul, but he got the three. And all of a sudden, it's back to a two-point game now. 51-49 from the right wing. Answering right back is Nate Thompson. Thompson says, I could do that too, big guy. (laughs) 53-49. Is that a two or three? Well. They got a two up on the board. I thought it was a three, but maybe he had his foot on the line. They put it down as a two on the board. Zerlini has it. Two dag. Back to Zerlini. He'll fire away. Got it. Zerlini is feeling it now. When he gets in that mode, he can. he's capable of throwing up points in a hurry. Absolutely. When he gets in that zone, look out. Here comes Parker Wolf. Down to Marksman, and he lays it in easily. 55-52, starting to get a little bit louder here as the Mule fans are starting to get back into the game again. Three-point game with six minutes to go. Don't go anywhere, folks. We got a good one here at the Mule Barn, as we thought it would be. Zerlini over to Reese Lee. He'll drive baseline. Light out to Hickson. Wide open look. Open from the top of the key. No. And Marksman's going to be fouled, and I think that's going to go on. Is it Dag or Lee? I believe they give it to Dag. Well, I'll say one thing. Marksman has been a force on the boards in this game. He has, uh, he has. been either gathering up all those loose balls or at least getting a hand on him. Altering shots. Mm-hmm. Scoring in the post. He's done it all. Except catch that pass. Kept that catch pass. That's right. Turnover on Marksman. Gives it back to the Mules. 5.37 to go in the game. Question is, how long do you wait before you put in Brian Estes? He is on the bench with four fouls. And Good. if he just joined us, Wyatt Gilbert's been out. He's got ice on his foot over there. Turned an ankle. Brian back in the ball game, I guess. I didn't see that. There he is. He's got it. And, and the shot is blocked, and Marksman comes away with it. Gets it ahead to Thompson. Thompson now to Wolf. Over to Nate Thompson. Down to Landon Wolf, and his shot's up and in. He's a tough player. He's really good on the post. He really uses his body well. He's got a strong upper, upper body strength, and... He goes up strong. That's 18 points. Uh, so 20 points now for Wolf. Coming in averaging 27. Here's Estes. To Hickson ball. Out to O'Neal. He's open. No good. Rebound by Effingham. They want to push it. It's Wolf taking it all the way and scoring, and he's fouled. Landon Wolf with a big bucket for the Hearts. Puts Effingham back up by 7. 59-52, 4.38 to go in the game. And uh, that foul was... Keen Hickson ball is second, I believe. Five team fouls on the Mules this half, just two on Effingham. And the three-point play is not good as the free throw is missed. Rebound by the Mules as Estes puts it up and in. Fairfield got down the court fast that time, Marty, and Estes was right there, gathered it in, and put it up off 
the window and was fouled. This game is far from over. Yeah, it's just uh, four minutes to go, and it's it's going to get close. 59-54, mm-hmm. 432 left. Ooh, missed free throw there by Estes. That's a, that's a tough one. Rebound by the Hearts. Here they come. That's knocked away by Zerlini out of bounds. Again, this game was tied after the first quarter, 19-19. Mules led by five at halftime. Effingham led by seven after three quarters. So we've been back and forth here. And Effingham leads it by five right now with the basketball. Mules tied it momentarily here early in the quarter. Yeah, I think he was trying to spread the floor just a little bit, mm-hmm. trying to get a breakdown in the in the defense to penetrate. Drew Thompson playing catch out there with Parker Wolf. Yeah, it's the first time they've run this uh, this spread in the game. They've got Landon Wolf in the middle of the spread. He's got the ball right now, and he's going to take it inside and missed it. Tipped back up by Marksman. Good. 61-54. Yeah, that forces the defense to come out and chase a little bit and it allows you for a breakdown one-on-one as oh. in and out no good by Zerlini. Did everything that go in. Hmm. Rebound by the Hearts. Taking it to the glass. Up and in. Drew Thompson. Nobody impeded his progress that time. He took it all the way, coast to coast. 63-54. Effingham by nine. 3.16 to go in the ball game. Here's Kane Hickson ball. He's got it. That's a three ball for Hickson ball. Big shot for and the Mules. And a, and a good timeout, too. Yeah, Real right good timeout. We got 3.11 to go in the ball game. It's Effingham by six. 63-57, and we'll be back with more in just a minute. Are you going out of town for a vacation or a weekend getaway? What are you going to do with your dog? That's easy. There's Jagger's Doggy Daycare in Mount Vernon. Jagger's Doggy Daycare is your one-stop shop for overnight dog boarding, doggy daycare, as well as dog grooming, and obedience dog training. It's your dog's home away from home. They will thrive, and they'll get one-on-one attention by a great staff. More information is available on the web at jaggersdoggydaycare.com. Jaggers Doggy Daycare, 414 Main Street in Mount Vernon. Welcome back to the Mule Barn here. Good battle between the Hearts and the Mules, 63-57. Plenty of time left here, Marty, with 3.11 to go. Mules need some stops, though. They need to stop. You know, they're going to have to get out and, and put some pressure on. Effingham, though, is, is very good at getting in the seam of the defense and penetrating. Fairfield, a little full-court pressure right here. They can get a quick turnover, maybe a force of a bad shot. Uh, come down to score, they got the, back in the ball game here. If you're Effingham, you don't have to get in a hurry as far as shooting. You're up by six. You're up two possessions. So no, they're going to look for a quality shot looking here. Looking for a good shot. Landon Wolf has it. There's a good shot for him. In and out. No good. He's usually pretty automatic out there, but that one lipped in and out. Jazel had Kane down low and didn't see him. Mm. He got him again. O'Neal. To Hickson ball. He'll drive baseline back to O'Neal. 231 to play. Mules need a bucket this There's trip. There's a layup. There you go. There you go. He just blew right by the defender. Big time move there by O'Neal. Cuts the lead to four, 63-59. That was a big basket. Now the Mules need a stop or an Effingham turnover. They go inside to Landon Wolf. Oh. And it's going to be a reach-in foul. Well, that's team foul number six, so Effingham will be in the bonus after this. Be shooting now. Oh, the turnover. There's the bad pass. Mules have it. Ahead to Hickson ball. And I'm not sure he, he got fouled again. Reese Lee came up with it, and then he was fouled. I'm not so sure that that kid even fouled. I think he got fouled before that, and they had to pick somebody. <laughs> right. It'll be out of bounds to the Mules with exactly two minutes to go in the game. Four-point contest. Comes into Estes. He'll drive baseline. There's a flush. Big-time dunk by Estes. 
cuts the lead to two. Just Almost with the turn over. And there's a layup by O'Neal. And we're tied. The Mules are turning on the gas. And there we go. There and a missed go. shot at the other end. Here comes Zerlini inside the lane. Oh, it's good. The Mules on a quick 6-0 run. And all of a sudden, it is 65-63 Mules. Oh. A 6-0 run by the Mules in less than 30 seconds. And, they, and that's how they are. They're very explosive. Brian Estes just fouled out. I'm not really sure on that foul. That was Landon Wolf inside with Estes. Estes picks up his fifth personal foul. Gets a big hand from the crowd. Tough to see him go to the sideline as the free throw is no good by Wolf as he tries to complete the three-point play. And it Coach doesn't. Back wanted to slow down with the timeout, I think. That's a good one. They need to slow down, talk about things, see what they want to do, look for a good shot. It's a whole different complexion to the game now. Tied 65-65 with a minute 20 left. Mules were down six just a moment ago. We said so with two minutes to go, Marty. And all of a sudden, a 6-0 run in less than 30 seconds. They, they're explosive. They are explosive. They come down, they can score in a, in a hurry. They got the lead. Then Effingham gets the layup by Landon Wolf. He gets fouled by Estes. He leaves the game with his fifth personal foul, but Wolf missed the free throw, which would have given Effingham the lead. And now it's all tied 65-65 with... A minute 20 left. All right, so if you're Coach Scott McElravey, what are you telling your mule players right now? One, 120 to go. I would say the number one thing is look for a quality shot. Spread the floor. Try to drive a lane, but look for a good shot. Don't just throw up something just to be taking a shot. If you're Effingham right now, you're going to have to really buckle down on defense and, and, and communicate. I look for Fairfield to come out and use the ball screen to try to penetrate some lanes and, and get a good look at the basket. Look for Jay O'Neill to try to do something, try to create something. You know, the amazing thing is that Marksman, as active as he's been around the rim and all the block shots he's had and all the change of directions and projections that he's done on mule shots, has only two personal fouls in this yes, game. Yes, ab- absolutely. That's been big for Effingham. Mule's ball as they come in to Jay O'Neill. They're going to run a little stall offense here. Mule spreading it out themselves a little bit as Zerlini will take it inside. He's fouled from behind. I don't know if they're going to give it to Thompson or the guy behind the hit him, which was Parker Wolf. Parker Wolf. These are some big, big free throws coming up for Zerlini. They went right at him. They did. Zerlini at the line, and he got it. Calm, cool, and collected. Puts Fairfield up by one. And, you know, he's just a sophomore. Just a sophomore. His defense has gotten a lot better, which has improved his minutes of play as well. Second one is good. Those were huge. 67-65, and Cantrell's going to come back into the game, replacing Zerlini, who gets a big round of applause. And And that's for defense, I believe. Cody, a little bit better defensive player. Right. Cody, you know, a year older, more experienced. Parker Wolf brings it up for the hearts. We're down to exactly one minute to play. Wolf inside the lane. Shot is short. Battle for the rebound. Marksman goes up and he twisted his ankle. A little he bit might too. have as he got tangled up down there with Dag as Dag tried to defend on the stick back. Who they give this to? Luke Dag. It's his fourth. Marksman will go to the line. Again, the Mules have lost Estes to fouls. They've lost Wyatt Gilbert to a sprained ankle. And the free throw by Marksman is no good. 54 seconds left in the game. The Mule Barn's starting to get loud. Fans starting to get into it, aren't they? They are. Another one by Marksman is good. We're down to a one-point game here. Again, the Mules don't have to feel like they got to put up a shot. Got to look for something quality. Don't turn the ball over. Take care of it. 39 seconds left. That's a foul. On Effingham, they have, uh, now that actually is a foul to give, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think they do. They have, I think they're shooting the next one. Uh-huh, that was the sixth foul. So they'll shoot on the next one. That on Marksman was his third. Ooh, Mules get almost it in. Got him foul, almost fouled him again. O'Neal has it. 
Gets by Parker Wolf. Wolf out there challenging him. And timeout. Uh, no, foul. Well, they did call the foul. They called okay. the foul. I saw uh, Coach Mack talking to the official. I thought maybe he was requesting a timeout, but I guess not. At the line for some more big free throws. This always, time, Jay Zell O'Neill. Close games always mm, well down to free boy, throws. Always. Dude, don't they? Big time free throw by O'Neill. 68-66. Mules by two. This has been such a back and forth affair. Got them both. Mules up by three. We've got 30 seconds to go in the game. Effingham brings it up. Fairfield. Oh, stop and pop. Oh, he called a timeout. Wow. He called a timeout. Effingham called the timeout. They wow. do not count that basket no. that Wolf hit. No. That would have tied the game. Instead, it's a timeout to Effingham with 25 seconds to go. How about that, Marty? You see that once in a while. You know, it's like timeout. No, I didn't really want it, but he called. He already blew the whistle and had to call. He had to call something. It's a little bit like the NFL guys, you know, either making or missing a field goal, and a timeout's called, then they come back, and, and sometimes the opposite thing happens. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's reset it for you. Again, the Mules and Effingham been in quite a battle here. It was a tied 19-19 after first quarter. Fairfield led by five at halftime. Effingham led by seven. After three quarters, it's been back and forth here in the fourth quarter, but Effingham looked like they were going to run away and hide there with a six-point lead with uh, two minutes to play, and all of a sudden, Fairfield erupted with a 6-0 run, Marty, that tied the game. This place got loud. Crowd got into it. Kids got excited, you know, and, and they, they carried that over on the defensive end. Jay Zell O'Neill with a big steal down there. So, yeah, that was, that was a huge key to this ball game right now. All right, here we go. 25 seconds left. Effingham with a basketball down by three. Fairfield has their best defensive team on the floor. Nate Thompson gets it in the corner to Wolf. His shot is up. It's short. No good. Rebound by the Mules. Jazel O'Neal, and he's going to be fouled. We'll walk to the other end, and Fairfield's going to shoot more free throws with 14 seconds left. Should mention, too, that the JV contest was a good one this afternoon. 63-52 was the final on that one. And Fairfield had to come from behind as that free throw is missed. It was not over yet. And somebody just called timeout. It was Effingham. They called timeout on the <laughs> missed free throw. He called that one before he got across the half line, didn't <laughs> he? He did. He did. All right, so 11.9 seconds to play. It's a three-point game. We're going to keep it right here rather than taking a break. We know, Marty, that Effingham's got a lot of guys who can shoot the three. Both the Wolves can, can fill it up from outside. Thompson can fill it up from outside. If you're Effingham, do you go for that three on the perimeter or do you just try to take it inside and get what you can? Maybe you get it into Marksman. He goes up for the shot or the dunk and gets fouled. I mean, a lot of things could happen here. Yeah, I think you try to get – I think they got the length of the floor. That's another thing to think sure. about. So, you know, you get the ball down here. You, if you get a quick score – I would say if, if they can get the ball across the half line and get to the, get to the paint within uh, a couple of sec, three seconds, maybe they might have a chance. But right now they've, they've got to go the length of the floor, score, and call a timeout, and then hope we get to come back down here and shoot free throws because they're going to foul. So you've got 12 seconds to do all that. That's a lot That's a lot to do. I'm it is. curious to see how Fairfield, what they're going to do. They're going to put a little token pressure on probably to make them work a little bit. And I think they should. I don't think they yeah. should just let them. Yeah. They can pick it up. Here we go. Down to nine seconds left. Effingham in the front court. With it is Wolf. He'll put up a three ball. He missed it. Ball is chased down, and we got a scrum. And, and a jump ball is going to be called. Possession arrow to Effingham. Yep, the arrow is pointing the way of the hearts. One and a half seconds left now. Now, guard the three. Let him score the two. Don't worry about it. Time Take out. away the three. Time out by the hearts again. So 1.4 left on the clock. Uh, Effingham will have the ball out of bounds on the baseline. So when it's out of bounds on the baseline, and you got a guy six foot eight that you could lob it to, but the thing is, the hearts are down by three. Down by three, yeah, they're going to run out of time. You, uh, you guard, let them have the two. Just guard the three. 
defend the passing, but don't let them let them get a wide open look at a three. So mm -hmm. guard that three, force the ball out. By the time they get the shot off, if they hit mm -hmm. a two, clock's going to run out. So, you know, you got to take away, defensively, you got to take away that three-point shot right here. All right. This has been a whale of a ball game, and we thought it would be, and it's been a great test for the Fairfield Mules and for the Effingham Hearts. This is going to help both teams down the stretch, no question about it. It's a good, it's just a good test for both ball clubs. This will make them better for postseason play. Here we go. 1.4 left. Effingham has the ball underneath their own basket, down by three. Let them have the two, take away the three. Parker Wolf could not get it in, so they'll call timeout. He wanted to go to his brother, it looked like, yeah. Landon. And the Mules did a good job defending that. Forcing another turnover and another timeout. And Effingham out of timeouts. You figure that if you're Effingham, you're going to go with the guy that got you here. You want to get the ball into Landon Wolf's hands if you can. He's their best player, best shooter. I mean, again, he's the second leading scorer in the state yeah. at 27 points a game. And, by the way, he's got 24 today if you're wondering at home what he's got. You know, let him get the ball. If they do get the ball inbounds forced, like Fairfield did a really good job out there. They forced everything away from the inside of the, of the arc. Mm -hmm. So continue to do that. If they get the ball inside and, and hit a two, so be it. Let them, ha let them have it. But guard that three. Right now they're looking like a step back here, like a step back. Luke Dagg is going to guard. There's a step back. It there comes it out to okay. knocked away by O'Neill as the pass tried to come into Wolf. O'Neill touched it. Clock started. Ball game over. Mules did a great job of defending that inbound pass, Marty, and the Mules win at 69 did, 66. Did exactly what they had to do. What a comeback by the Mules. Down by six with two minutes to go and win the game by three. 69-66. Wow. Marty's going to work on our totals here, our stats. We'll come back and share those with you here in, in a moment. What a thriller. The Mules improved to 23-2 and on the season. Effingham drops to 10-11. and But, again, that competition that they play, being in the Apollo Conference and 3A basketball, they are a quality opponent, and this was a very, very good game for Fairfield to schedule and to play here at the last minute. So really glad they were able to get that done. We'll come back and take a look at the final stats and wrap it up here from the Mule Barn in just a moment. As a craftsman, Gordy had imagination and vision. As a business owner and machinist, he understood all the moving components and how important they were to making things work. When he dreamed of building his business, he knew he needed help. FNB provided the spark necessary to ignite his growth. That partnership has proven to be his best creation yet. life may take you. It all starts with the first step. Begin your journey with Frontier Community College, the foundation for your future. Fairfield Produce is a big supporter of the mules and are happy to sponsor this broadcast. Visit Fairfield Produce for bird seed and feed for all kinds of farm animals. They proudly sell Macaulay's horse feed, which is the same feed from the same mill that is fed to the famous racehorses like American Pharaoh and Justify. Cindy Grimes also invites you to stop in at Fairfield Produce for diamond brand dog food and cat food, as well as dog collars with personalized name tags. Fairfield Produce also carries styrofoam products you might need, as well as frozen food. Fairfield Produce is open Monday through Friday. 8 to 5 and 8 to noon on Saturday at 206 Southeast 2nd Street in Fairfield. It's the heating season, and Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods remind you that they have fast, reliable propane delivery service for your home or farm. And if you need those propane bottles filled up, you can bring them to Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods for fast service. 
Looking for a wide selection of guns and ammunition? You'll find it at Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods. You can even search online through our website at WayneWhitePropane.com. And don't forget, we also have hot tubs and supplies for your hot tub as well at Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods, located on West Main Street in... Carter Turf and Tractor is now open in their beautiful new location on West Main Street in Fairfield in the former Save-A-Lot building. Carter Turf and Tractor is your area dealer for high-quality Kubota tractors in a variety of sizes, perfect for a landscaping business or to easily handle a variety of jobs around your home or farm. They can customize a solution for your needs. They also have the Kubota RTV utility vehicles for on-road and off-road transportation and hauling needs. When there's mowing or lawn work to be done, Carter Turf and Tractor has you covered with X-Mark riding mowers and walk-behind mowers. They also feature a good selection of Echo brand brush cutters, trimmers, and chainsaws, as well as Honda and Generac generators. Come in and see for yourself at the new Carter Turf and Tractor, open 8 to 5 Monday through Friday and 8 to 2 on Saturday. Big win today for the Fairfield Mules. I don't know how much more you could ask for, Marty. 69-66 the final, but boy, it was a nail-biter, and... You know, the uh, the Mules had to overcome several challenges today. And first of all, you talk about the fact that you had uh, Brian Estes in early foul trouble and really didn't play a lot of minutes in the game. And then you, in the second half, played the entire second half without Wyatt Gilbert due to an ankle sprain. And so they really had to overcome a lot of obstacles today, uh, but yet were able to battle back, even down six points with two minutes to go, and found a way to win it. Found a way to win it, you know, and that's a, a good win for Fairfield being down by what eight points I think it was there six down but six, six, six runs. two points yeah, yeah. the two minutes to go yeah to, to come back like that and and to battle back and get yourself in position to win the basketball game that's they could have folded up their tent and said hey you know they're just a, they're a bigger school than we are mm -hmm. and they didn't do it they, they dug in they got it done on the defensive end they hit a couple of big shots uh, just a tremendous effort to come back from that. And that was definitely the turning point in the ballgame. Oh, no doubt about it. you got some stats for us here. Got some uh, scoring for us here. We'll go down uh, uh, Fairfield scoring first of all. Wyatt Gilbert, who was hampered with an injury in the uh, late, I think it was six seconds to go in the second quarter, ended the ball game with six points. Jazel O'Neal, uh, ten points. Kane Hickson ball with seven. Brian Estes, who ten points with limited playing time due to fouls, but uh, contributed. Uh, ten points in the, in the ball game. Cody Cantrell off the, the bench with nine big points in mm -hmm. the first half with yeah. three big threes that really gave Fairfield a lift when they needed it whenever uh, they lost Brian at the foul trouble. And Landon Zerlini off the bench with 17 points to lead the Fairfield Mules in scoring. Uh, Landon also with three three balls there and a huge fourth quarter for, for Zerlini as he ended up with uh, 13 of his, uh, excuse me, 12 of his 17 points in that fourth quarter. And then Luke Dagg, uh, Luke getting it done uh, on uh, defense, but six points contributed there and, and did a tremendous job guarding the bigger post player in uh, uh, Max, uh, excuse me, uh, Marksman. Ma Marksman, yeah. yeah. Guarding mm -hmm. Marksman in that ball game there. He did a really good job there. Uh, for Evingham, uh, Parker Wolf with 12, Landon Wolf with 24. Um, been averaging, I think you said 20, 27. 27 points a game, so he right on his pretty much on his average. And 21 had been his low of the year, so he stays did, above that. Did, did stay above that. Nate Thompson with five. Uh, Cole Markson, uh, an absolute force inside uh, with 21 points. Did a tremendous job. Drew Thompson with four, and that rounded up their scoring. Fairfield with a uh, total of 69. Effingham was 66. Fairfield was 6 of 9 from the line for 67%. And uh, Effingham, 13 of 19 for 68%. But Effingham missed some key free throws down the mm -hmm. stretch when they needed to hit free throws. And we talked kind of off the air. It never, it never fails. It always boils down to who makes free throws. Yeah, sure does. And how about, the, again, the super subs? And I, and I hesitate to call them super subs because, honestly, these three guys would probably be starting for so many other teams. Starting for so many other in, in Southern Illinois, you know, and I'm talking about Cody Cantrell, Luke Dagg, and Lan Landon Zerlini. But the play that they did today off the bench was just so huge. And, and like we said at the beginning of the broadcast, we thought that the depth might be an advantage to Fairfield today, and it certainly was. It was an advantage, and it has been all season long because we get in a little bit of foul trouble. Okay, we bring in, we bring in Luke Dagg whenever Brian Estes gets in foul trouble. Uh, White Gilbert goes down with an injury. We bring in a, a, a Landon Zerlini, and we move uh, some people around on the, on the offensive and defensive end. You know, just a tremendous effort from the bench today. And, and you got to tip your hat to those kids mm -hmm. because – they know their job. 
and they may not be getting their name called in the starting lineup, but they're coming off the bench, and they're getting a lot of quality minutes, and they're the difference in yeah. winning and losing a lot of these basketball games. Fairfield 23-2, and two, mm-hmm. and, and that's a big factor for them. Think of all the key plays that the three of them were involved in throughout the game, oh, though, oh, too. Oh, yeah. You know, you look at that, you know, and you, you just look back here and just, just bench points alone. Mm-hmm. You're looking at 32 bench points yeah. of your 69 points. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. That's, 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 that's just that's, amazing. That's how huge. many teams how many teams do that, have that many bench points in a tight game like this? I, that's no, that's you, rare. In high, rare. In, in, here, in high school, you just don't see that. No. You, know, you just don't see that. So, you know, you tip your hat to those kids because they're good kids, and, and they know – they want to win, yeah. and they don't care who scores right. just as long as we score, and that's that's a, a factor of a winning program. Very, very unselfish play for sure. Yeah, big win. Anything else you want to add, Marty? Huge win for Fairfield. I know I watched Coach Mack on the air when the, the final horn went off, and he gave a little <laughs> fist pump. He's pretty excited. You know, that's a good win for them. It sure you is. You know, and, and going in here, you know, uh, I hope that uh, Wyatt's ankle is, uh, is not uh, mm-hmm. sprained too badly, so I hope we can get right. him back and get him going again. Mules are still, of course, uh, undefeated in the Black Diamond, too. They hope to make a clean sweep in the Diamond to be the uh, conference champs again. And, again, today was one of those tests and one of those games to get you ready for postseason play. And down the stretch, it kind of felt like a postseason game, didn't it? It did, you know, and, and that's the thing that you look at, too, you know, and it's, it's, a, it's a golden opportunity for these kids to play good competition at this point in the season when you're getting ready for – for regional action to start up here, you know, just around the corner. Mm-hmm. And it, that's a good uh, good opportunity for them to capitalize on that. And they didn't fold up under the pressure when they got down. They went on that 6-0 run, which was huge. Right. And, again, speaking of regional, we don't yet know where Fairfield will go in the regional. They'll either go to Mount Carmel or Harrisburg in the Class 2A regional. The seeds have come out. Uh, or I mean, the seeds will come out on February 7th, which is just around the corner. And then the next day of February 8th is when the pairings will come out. So we're going to know very, very soon – uh, where Fairfield will be, more than likely, uh, they should be the number one seed without a doubt in the subsectional complex. And whether they'll go to Mount Carmel or Harrisburg just remains to be seen. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Marty, thanks so much for being on the broadcast with us. It was a fun time today. Again, we wrap it up from the Mule Barn. Uh, a big win for the Fairfield Mules coming from behind to beat the Effingham Hearts 69-66. to For Marty Slover, I'm Randy Olson saying thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and so long from the Mule Barn.